The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Bell and this is Real Agriculture. I'm here today with Keith Gobbert for this episode of Canola School and we're going to be talking about powdery mildew and some of the other molds, random dusts that you may end up experiencing coming up as you're combining canola. So welcome Keith, it's great to see you. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we'll start off with powdery mildew because I've been hearing a lot about this. Talk right. to me a little bit about what it is and what some of the symptoms are. So powdery mildew is, is a disease that canola can have. It lives on, it likes to live on living tissue. It's just a white powder, it's well named. Uh, it likes relatively high relative humidity. Now that doesn't mean that you needed a lot of rain. In fact, years like 2025, 20, uh, which we're in now, we've had some really nice high temperatures where I'm going to say we're touching 30 for three weeks now, almost every day, but we still have some dew in the morning and we still have some wet tissue in there. The, this particular fungus likes to grow under those conditions and more importantly, it hasn't been washed off. In most areas of Alberta from Calgary to Peace River, we haven't seen a significant rain event. Uh, this disease has, this fungus has had three weeks to grow, make a little bit of powder, make a little bit more powder, actually make a little bit more powder. Uh, and we've, uh, in a previous employment and now working with Alberta Canola, we, we get this kind of question, what is this dust? Uh, almost every year, but it's rarely really widespread. So the unique thing about 2025 is that it's widespread and it's based on some really nice warm temperatures that this fungus likes, uh, combined with some moisture that we don't really believe was there, but it was. Uh, uh, causing it to create a lot of dust. It's not the same powdery mildew that's in peas, but you might as well think of it as the same. It's a white dust that's colonizing the plant. If there's a yield penalty, it would be because this dust is covering the green tissue, uh, but we don't really see a yield penalty in, can in canola. We typically sort of say that this is a neutral disease. It's just, a, just an annoying thing, like the swather in the background. Uh, your windshield wipers don't really work on this dust. You end up with an inch of what looks like flour with this particular fungal disease. Uh, but we have some other ones that, don't, that aren't white. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's uh, just one more thing that causes dust in, uh, at, at harvest time. So with the annoyance factor, it cakes on. Now, what does that take to wash it? Are you worried about bringing equipment between fields? So I'm not aware that there's a, like this is a pretty ubiquitous or, or mean like it always present, could be anywhere uh, disease. So we're, we're not worried about the fact that you've got a, a swath or covered with white dust moving from one field to another. I'm, I'm not aware that that's a concern of any kind because this particular disease is everywhere and will pop up if you get good conditions for the disease. That hasn't necessarily been good conditions for the canola necessarily, uh, but like I said, this one likes to grow on living tissue. So as the longer the season is and the longer the time period without a really hard rain to wash it off, uh, the more you're likely to notice it. And it's often in small pockets where we'll have those conditions. And this year it happens to be across, which is across a couple provinces that we're getting powdery mildew questions uh, this year. So does the fungus overwinter in the soil or how does it proliferate? You know, I don't know. I, it, it overwinters as a small black sphere, a, a fungal body. Uh, it overwinters on any surface. It's a pretty tough, pretty tough uh, disease. I'm, I'm not aware that there's any management strategies that, that a grower is going to uh, employ. This is, this is a disease that doesn't cause us too much issues and is, is uh, capable of arriving in a canola field anytime. One of the other diseases that you'll see on occasion is uh, either a sooty mold or Altenaria. Uh, and in that case, uh, swather behind us is white. And in some cases, I, I joke that, you know, you can't, you can't tell what maker model the guy's using because halfway across the field, it's just a cloud of dust and the swather is white. Uh, if you're uh, swathing after a hailstorm or a, a field that you've got a significant amount of dead canola in, uh, Altenaria really will really set in and it's got a black sooty mold sort of fungal powder and you'll get almost the same results uh, but a different color. A different color. So uh, there's lots of things that can cause dust this just happens to be one of them and no management strategies that we're aware of that the uh, farmer needs to employ. So no fungicides or, no fungicides. or anything for Well it. not for powdery mildew there's no fungicides registered. Uh, some of the sclerotinia fungicides can have uh, activity on Altenaria we haven't seen that we've needed to manage Altenaria in a big way uh, in the last number of years. 
it was a significant problem when we grew Polish canola, but, but I'm, I'm kind of dating myself if I, if I acknowledge that I, I did know what Polish canola was in the field because we really don't see many acres of that now. So, so no, uh, no management strategies, no fungicide applications controlling this dust. Uh, just a whole lot of water when you go to wash it off when you come back to the yard. I was going to say, any recommendations for washing it off the equipment afterwards? So blowing it off dry seems to work a little bit better than trying to wash it off because once you do get it wet, you got to put a lot of water to it. Uh, uh, when I've uh, washed, watched guys try to clean this off, uh, it doesn't come off the first little while that they're washing it down and it leaves a ring around all the puddles in the yard after they wash the, wash the swather. So it's, it's a pretty sticky, messy spore or dust to get off it. It would be very similar to trying to get lime or flour off. Like it, it just, you, you gotta be pretty persistent to get rid of it. Right, and any words of encouragement for growers that are going out and trying to wash it off of their combines right now? Well, uh, don't start with only a little bit of water in the tank. Uh, I don't know if that's a word of encouragement, but no, it, it's uh, uh, make sure your window's clean enough to see out of and uh, your radiator's clear. But other than that, this is one of those things that's just going to keep coming. So uh, manage it as best you can and and uh, have enough water handy when you do go to wash it off at the end of the season to get it all off. Well, thank you so much for your time, Keith. No issues. Pleased to be here. And that was Keith Gabbert on Real Agriculture.